In this video, I'm going to give you the best tips and tricks for new players in No Rest for the Wicked. So starting out right at the beginning, I recommend going to your settings. And in the gameplay tab, if you go all the way down to the bottom, there are three stats here that you can turn on, like the show enemy poise bars so that you know when you're about to stun an enemy. This is shown by the white bar under their health bar. And once this fills up, they stunned. Then there's the option to show damage numbers so that as you're attacking enemies, you can actually see how much damage you're doing. This might not be for everybody, but I really like having the damage numbers. I like seeing numbers, okay? Now the game is just released in early access. Now what this means is that this game is still a work in progress and for the first big update that they're getting, we're gonna be introduced to co-op multiplayer in this update. So that's gonna be pretty cool when that releases. But right now it does not have multiplayer, but it is coming soon. And it looks like it's going to make use of the realms system within the game where you make a realm and you have one and you can invite, I guess, friends to your realm and they join you with a up to, I think, four people co-op. Now, if you are playing through this game, you'll no doubt realize that there is a ton of exploration to do. And there's many things like locked doors or chests that you see that you're not able to get to just yet. For this reason, I recommend opening up your map and using the marker system, right? So if I go ahead and I go onto the map here, let's say I know there's a chest located right over here in this room here. I can go ahead and place a marker and I can use a, you know, a chest icon for the marker or I can mark a boss, a mining node that I want to come back for later. Or quite simply, if I'm looking for a bridge that's located right there, I can put a like red marker and you can see it will actually show up on my screen at the bottom there. And as I run towards it, it will, you know, guide me towards that red marker and you can use this as a way to navigate to this location. Now, the only time I'm going to talk about game mechanics is for this tip over here. And it might sound a little obvious, but learn to parry. Parry is when you will parry an attack just before it lands. If you're playing on a controller, which I highly recommend, it feels so good on a controller. This will be the left trigger, which will activate a kind of like stun effect on the enemy as soon as you parry them, which gives you a free opening to get like two or three attacks on the enemy, depending on the weapon you're using. In fact, the first boss is pretty much easy as hell if you know how to parry. Now through this game, you will unlock food recipes that you can use at the cooking fire pit. But how do you unlock these recipes? Well, first off, they're going to be put into your inventory as scrolls. If you go ahead to the second tab in your inventory, you'll see you'll have these scrolls. You'll have to use the use option, which you can see there it says use press Y and you can go ahead and learn these recipes. And this is how you get these recipes in the game so that when you sit at your campfire, you'll see you have the option to make more than one type of food, which is super handy. If you've played enough of the game, you will notice that as you explore the game, the areas that you've already explored are now covered in fog. Like the beginning of the game, the beginning area here is covered in fog, which is surprising because obviously I explored this area. This game kind of like forgets that you explored here. And what this means is that everything here, the monsters and stuff have respawned, especially after you make your way to the first town, you actually come back here and there's a whole different set of monsters roaming around the place now. And this is essential for, well, killing enemies and gaining experience so that you can level up your character so that you can, you know, be stronger. So make sure you double back on the areas you've already explored. You know, the longer it's been, just go run around the area, go kill everything quick. Of course, this means that the resources will respawn as well, which of course you're going to need to make more healing food because you're going to use a lot of healing food in this game, especially if you're not the best player. Also, don't be afraid to explore because there's so many different ways you can get to different areas of the game that you might not have noticed. The more you play this, the more you'll realize that you can like cheap skate and jump around to different areas of the map without having to go a logical means. As long as you can climb it and survive it, jump into water, you're good. And for the next most important tip is that every single chest that you loot does respawn as well. And you should know that everything that you collect from the chest is not always the same as everybody else. It is a randomized loot that's pulled from a loot table. So if you're watching a video that says you can get a certain item from a chest, you're probably not going to get the exact same stuff from your chest in your game because these chests constantly respawn with a whole bunch of different stuff. So just know that first. Now, after you beat the very first boss and you make your way to Sacrament, you will have to complete like I think one quest of the main story that you'll just speak to a bunch of NPCs in this location. You'll eventually make your way to the like the central area of this entire encampment. And eventually you will find the blacksmith Fillmore will be at this location over here. So you can see here, if I open up the map, 
the blacksmith is pretty much in the center right after the first bridge that you cross as you enter right here. But as you explore the map and you've, you know, progressed a few quests, you should see all of these NPCs and their faces shown on the map for you to find at any point of time, which I highly recommend speaking to every single one of them. But if we go to Fillmore specifically, he is the blacksmith. Now, when you speak to him, you'll be able to do two major things besides selling and buying stuff. We're going to be repairing our gear. So when your gear breaks after you die, you, your gear takes damage. And if you die too many times, your gear becomes useless. So make sure you come here to repair and sell unnecessary stuff to make the money to do so. But a very, very, very important thing is that you can also come here to upgrade. Now, upgrading is really cool because you can take an item and make it really, really strong by upgrading it. For example, look at these daggers that I'm using over here. They have eight damage. Now the starting daggers I think have like four, I think it was four or three, something like that. It's going to take armor shards and copper ingots to upgrade the, you know, the, the basic items like, you know, three times. After three upgrades, the ingredients become a little bit more harder to attain. But having a weapon that does eight damage instead of three damage is a big difference. Of course, you can upgrade your armor here too. You can see I'm only level eight. I'm level eight and I have some really good stuff and a lot of the things that I fight right now don't actually, you know, bother me as much as they did at the beginning of the game. Now, this is not the only NPC who can make your gear stronger. If you go ahead and just walk around the corner over here, just to the northwest of the location, you'll find Eleanor. Eleanor is right over here, as you can see from the blacksmith, just right here. Now, when you speak to Eleanor, she has a ton of different things that she can do. The first thing is enchant. Now, enchanting takes a gear and upgrades it to a, a different quality. So this right here is a white quality, you know, armor piece. If I go in my inventory, you can see here I have like pants and, and gloves that are the blue quality. And then the one right above that is the purple quality. And of course, this makes them a lot stronger, but does come with a, a weakness in the fact that you can't have as many gem slots. For example, if I look at the white armor, I can have four gems placed in this. But if I go ahead and I look at, you know, any of my other armor, like this blue one over here or this purple one, there's only one gem slot available. So at Eleanor, you can use the enchant feature to upgrade the quality of your gear to the next level. And it just costs like a, you know, silver or like a value amount, which you can see on screen. Alternatively, you can use the infuse option, which allows you to put gems into your gear so that you can get a different effect, like an extra bonus of sorts, like how you see some of the text over there, like focus gain increased by 9%. You get gems that do, you know, stuff similar to that. And then her third and final option is a very scary one if you don't know how to use it properly, which is the runes. Now in the runes here, you'll immediately see two weapons that I have here that are in my inventory. This is my one that I'm actually holding right now, which you can tell by the hand icon, which means it's equipped. And then I have this big ass claymore that I looted recently, which is also pretty cool that I don't want to get rid of. Now a rune is actually the attacks that you can do when you use focus. All right, if you see on the screen here, you can see it shows the rune for juggle strike. And if I go ahead and I select this weapon, you'll see the rune here on the left or in the main screen is juggle strike and it's extractable. If you press extract, you can put this rune into your inventory and actually apply it to a different weapon later on. So if this weapon sucks, but I just want this ability for another weapon, I can go ahead and steal this rune for later, have the weapon be destroyed in the process, because that's what happens when you extract it. Alternatively, you can go to an empty slot and you can go ahead and select, and you can place a rune of your own choice. Eleanor actually sells some runes herself, like this Pulse of Health, which I, I bought from her as well, which you can equip onto one of your weapons. So this is how you're going to place runes that you've gained from other weapons and put them into your main weapons. Like for example, on my daggers, I have the dual breaker and I have the fire throw, you know, effects on here. And this is your focus bar. So when you're holding one of the, you know, LB or RB, which is like, you know, your main weapon or your offhand weapon, in case with the daggers, it's the, the same button. But you can see here, it changes the thing at the bottom left of the screen. And you can use these attacks, which are your main attacks, which is which uses that focus bar, which is that purple bar just under your experience bar at the top left over here. So you can see my, my second attack here only uses 50, which is halfway. So I can go ahead and use this now, which is the fire throw. So I can throw a fire weapon, it hits an enemy, puts them on fire, and then it comes back and hits them on the way back, sets them on fire again. 
So be very aware of this knowledge as you're finding weapons. Instead of just straight up selling them, you might actually be able to, you know, take their runes and save the, uh, the you know, the abilities that they have for later. So now while you will get plenty, and I, I mean plenty of quests in the, in the, you know, in the main town of Sacrament, there is an NPC over here right by the Whisper. So the, the Whisper that's right over here, which you should find at this location. There is Captain Randolph, who is located right here. He is an NPC which you can do several things at, like bounties and challenges, which give you money and other kinds of rewards. So if I go ahead and I speak to him here, his first option, bounty hunting, is where you can choose a bounty that you have to go ahead and complete. For example, I have this one here where I have to slain torn rats infesting the Orban Glades area. And you can see the reward I get there is at the bottom right to get some money, a sword, a recipe, and a looks like a chest armor chest piece but you're only allowed to select one bounty at a time. Now these are the ones available daily, and if you go down here, there's bounties available for the week. So you can only do one of these right now per the week. Well, one of them active at a time at least. So go ahead, read what the objective is, see where it's located. You can actually also go ahead and access these from your activities screen in your, you know, your main menu, and you can go to the bounties by pressing the right trigger. You can see in the middle of the screen, and you can go ahead and find these at any time when you're playing the game to you know, get that information of what were you supposed to do again kind of thing. But you'll also see we also get challenges from Captain Randolph. And for challenges, at least in this case, we're able to accept every single one that he gives us. So if I go ahead and I go to challenges, which is his second option, you'll see I have all of them active, right? You get the two weekly ones and you get the five daily ones, right? So when you want to go ahead and turn in a challenge after doing it, like this one over here where you had to enchant one weapon, I'm going to get some gold and some items. I can go ahead and turn this in and boom, I get those rewards and the daily challenge is complete. And obviously tomorrow you'll come back and there'll be five new daily challenges to do. So this is stuff to get yourself some gear, some items so that you're progressing very nicely. Some of them are super basic, but are things that you can actively do to make progress and get quest rewards by, you know, just playing the game. And that's everything I think you should know as a new player to No Rest for the Wicked. If you have any tips of your own, please feel free to share them in the comments down below for everybody else. And thank you guys so much for watching.